First I'll show you the original um, way I did it, which was pretty complicated, but now um, I've got this new version in here, which is that uh, plus that. And that's the whole thing. Um, you put in your like um, your buttons or whatever. You hook them into these, and you have to program it. You just have these different keyframes on a timeline, and you set this to the number of keyframes, and that's it. You have like a complete one at the end. It sends a signal from reset and from complete. Um, so if I play time, so it's currently set to A, B, C, D. So if I go A, B, C, and then you look at this complete thing over there, the complete thing turns on and it sends a pulse out of complete. But if you put it in incorrectly, then the whole thing resets. You can use it for any kind of um, ordered um, passcode phrase um, button combo thing anything you want to, want to really um, yeah so now I'll build it so I'll add a microchip and uh, to make things easier I used um, just switches and then yeah I'll just do the nodes first so these uh, nodes will have uh, one node for when it's um, acceptable to press that button, if that's the right button. And this will be incorrect, which will reset stuff. And you plug the, that into both of those. So when you turn it on, then both of those get gets that signal. Uh, the correct one will start off because it won't always be correct, but most of the time it will be incorrect because only one of these buttons will be incorrect. So let's, uh, oh yeah, make these um, through nodes or no port nodes. So they're just inside this microchip. And then let's copy that. So we have four buttons like that. Um, and I'll uh, color code these and give them names so that it's easier to test. So first I'll demonstrate how that this part works. So if we have a counter and a switch, then um, and some target number, then as we turn on this switch, then it will count up, which is uh, as we, you might expect. But then we have a timeline where we'll do all our programming for the um, the actual order of the buttons that are required, and I'll put it onto uh, beats mode which is clicking the time like that to toggle between them, which means we get these columns, which makes it nice and easy to line things up. There's a nice feature of the timeline where if you plug a value into the playhead, then whatever value you send it between zero and one or a percentage like that, then it will set the playhead position on the timeline. And uh, coincidentally, the count progress output is the percentage through from 0 to 25 um, that the counter currently is. So as we go up, it's like increasing that number. So if you set it to just have 3, or if we set it to 4, then that's a quarter, so it's sending 0.25. But you can't see the, the last digit there. And then half, and then 3 quarters, and then full. So we can use that value to set the playhead. Uh, so that would be, if we set that to five, because there are one, two, three, four, five columns. Then as we increase it, it just goes to the beginning of the next little segment there. And so it gets the end. So we want to increase this counter when the correct button has been pressed. So let's plug those into the add of the counter. And here I'm holding L1 while pressing X on a on a little input tab or output tab, and that um, adds the Y there, but 
keeps hold of a new wire so that you can just add it to the next one and then you can circle out of it like that. Uh, so at the moment none of them are going through so turning these on doesn't do anything because that node is off so the signal doesn't go through. Uh, but now we're going to start programming stuff. So let's add a keyframe onto here that turns that one on. I'll just leave it at that for now. And then while it's in the timeline, if you press up, then it scales it up like it scales up anything else. But because it's on a timeline, it just scales it, the duration of it in the timeline. And now you can grab the ends and just snap them to be the width of that column. And this is for A, so we'll call that A. Now because it, the, the playhead is here, that keyframe is active and that node is on. So the signal from that button will go through and increase the counter. So now if we play time and we add, then it's gone through. But now, because the playhead is past that one, then this doesn't let anything through and it doesn't increase the counter. Like that. Um, so if we press the wrong button, we want to reset this counter, don't we? So let's make a node, which will come in handy later and make that an output node because we want to be able to send it out and put the incorrect um, nodes into the reset. So let's do that same thing again and wire that into resetting the counter. So uh, now, we, now we have that hooked up, we need this keyframe to say that it's not incorrect. So let's turn that off. So now when we press the button, and this is the correct button, it will send it to the correct um, action, which is increasing the count, and it won't send it to the resetting action. So let's play time, and then turn that on. And it kind of freaks out a bit like that, because um, what's happening is we're increasing the count, so the playhead moves to there, so then it thinks it's an incorrect uh, button press, and then it resets it, which moves the playhead to there, but then it's correct again, so then it adds it and it keeps on moving back and forth. To fix that we need to put these buttons through signal manipulators. So a signal manipulator has all sorts of uses um, uh, from like uh, ramping up and ramping down values to mapping them to different ranges uh, like a funnel like that, mapping a big range to a small range, things like that. But if we just put it onto pulse mode then when it starts receiving a positive signal it will send out a signal for one frame and then it will stop sending a signal and it will be zero from then on which means um, if we hook that up over here so if you watch the, uh, the the face of that gadget if I turn it on you can see the live input of switches on so it's showing a full bar but the output just flickers on and off. Um, so this is useful because it's going to send a signal for a very brief time, which increases that, which will move that to there. Um, but once it's moved there, on the next frame, it won't be trying to do anything else. It won't send it to the incorrect and try and reset or anything like that. So it's very useful. So now if we hook that back up and we play time, then we turn on that button and it just moves to the first thing but then it stops trying to do anything at all because it's it's after that pulse so that's cool um so let's try uh do the correct one but now there is no correct one because there's no keyframe there so let's just turn on one of these other buttons and that's reset it because it's gone through there and reset the counter which has moved the playhead back to the start so let's just add uh, this signal manipulator to these other buttons. Cool, so now they're all hooked up. Now let's add uh, keyframes for each of these um, each of these valid buttons. So now if we test that, it's got to be A, B, C, and then D. So A, B, C, D. And you get to the end. So now let's make a complete keyframe and that will turn on there's like different ways of doing this but I just 
to do this. So now that will be off until it gets to here when it turns on. And let's just put this over up here. Um, and we'll turn that into a pulse as well by using a signal manipulator. And then output it so that you could use this in some other logic and just use this output without worrying about this stuff in here if you want to. Right, so let's see if that works. So A, B, C, D, and complete is on, which is awesome. The last thing I do is, actually usually the first thing I do, make a chip and copy these over here and put them like that on an unpowered chip and you leave these powered and you have the complete one as well. Um, and you can even like... Uh, line those up and now you have like a palette of the buttons that you can just copy into the timeline and because you've already sized them if you copy that into here they're already the right size and you can place it just right and then turn on the save position and now when you open it again it's like lined up really nicely for you um same for the timeline if you like put it up here or something then save the position and now you've got your stuff ready to go to program a new code I'd like to thank Jack Power, X Cantaloupe, Dead MC and all of my other supporters for making this tutorial possible thanks for watching if you'd like me to continue making these tutorials and helping creators across the internet you can find out how to support me in the link in the description thanks for your consideration and I'll see you in the next one.